I'd like to now introduce our second speaker, Yvonne, Yvonne Dalorto. Hi, Yvonne. Good hello, evening. Hello, How are hello. you? <laughs> are you well? Oh, lovely to see you, as always. Yeah, as always. Yeah, no, it's great to see you. Um, Yvonne's been working with Macmillan for many years as well. And um, she's a she's a British trained teacher, head teacher, teacher trainer, materials writer, and she has a particular interest in social and emotional learning and promoting the development of, of social and emotional learning in early years education. And her talk today is called Nurturing Social and Emotional Learning. So over to you, Yvonne. Wow. It was a real pleasure to see Sky because I yeah. kept thinking of all the activities he was doing. Do you know, you could put that to social and emotional learning. You could be doing that yes. with social and emotional learning. And that is how easy it is, really. And so what I hope is that teachers, you know, I was a pre-primary teacher and a, uh, and a primary teacher. So I know how difficult it is with the little mm. ones. And therefore, what I have tried to do in the session today is give you some ideas that are they have been tried out in class and online, so they're not impossible to do. Also, they're very cross-curricular because I do believe if you're teaching one thing, it can cross other areas of learning, Louise. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's constantly getting what children want to, to do. And also a way for you to introduce social and emotional learning. Now, this is the, always the nervous bit, getting, getting online. So just yes. there one second while I go to share screen and what I'm going to do with the first part of my presentation today is just talk you through what it is because one of the things Louise is that uh, there's a bit of a misconception about what social emotional learning is and also is it extra work for the teacher so during our session we're going to have a look at some great tactile multi-sensory ideas and also just a little bit of an explanation of what it is and how you can simply weave it into all your areas of teaching without being additional work to your planning. So I'm hoping at the end of the session you have a better idea and there's some great ideas that not only you can use from Sky, I love some of his practical get up and move ideas, even in our COVID classrooms, but also things that you can do online. So I'm going to get started. Here we go. Thanks. Okay, so where are we now? It's a unique time in our lives and what is happening to you in your classroom is happening globally. So it is, it's a unique time where all teachers are having the same types of experiences, which I have to say is, is, a, is, is, is one of those things that probably will never happen again. Also, what we have had to do as you as teachers, you had to learn a new skill set virtually overnight. You left on a Friday, your school, and on a Monday you were told you were online. And, and really, you know what, Louise, nobody prepared us for that. It no. just literally happened over a weekend. So I, just like you, had to learn how to negotiate all my in-class resources probably to be online. And it has been a bit of a journey learning how to do this. Also, my workspace could be my family place where I'm at home and children were spending a lot of time online. Um, and so our home became a stressful zone where we were trying to accommodate all these different work areas, study areas, home areas in a very short, small space. And also we had to learn a new routine about being online and also as a teacher with very young children, normally your face-to-face -face contact is how you gauge their progression and also monitor the curriculum that you have with them and the patients, where, where are we going with them? So this brings us now to the bigger bubble, and we're using that word a lot, bubble, about what has been noticed from this. You know, and I'm not going to read out everything there, but there may be some things that you recognize, not only personally for yourself, but with the children as well. And I have to say this, this 
down the bottom here, you know, the loss of value and self-worth. You know, Louise, this comes really from the interactions we the children have with each other, being able to go in and talk about, you know, what I've played with, what I've done. And that has kind of been lost when we were online. And you can imagine for small children going back to school, you know, it's quite intimidating having to make those friendship groups again. Yes. So this is a brief just insight to where we have been and where we're going. And this is where we are now, where our children are. And so with social and emotional learning, I'm just going to very briefly look at what happened last year. And as you can see, last year, we thought it was going to be a temporary situation. I think you are the, the same, Louise. We thought this is only going to last till Christmas. Yeah. And we also or the summer. <laughs> or the summer, yeah. And also one of the things that we had to do with our new skill set as teachers is look at how to do parallel teaching online and also going back to class. And now we have even quarantine children. And also children developed, uh, as I've put here, digital li literacy very, very quickly. And as preschool teachers, as we saw with Sky talking about phonics, how important it is to have that interaction with them, to know what they are learning and if they're learning well. And this also comes to the gaps in education. As a teacher, it's difficult for us to assess when we're online. And now we're back in the classroom again, we're catching up. And also the most important thing, and last year we were beginning to recognize that there were, there were emotional and social concerns about children being isolated and how that was affecting them as they were developing. And here we are now, and the restrictions continue. The parallel teaching tends to continue. Um, a lot of the teachers I have spoken to have said that we need to do more rigorous uh, evaluation because I wouldn't say we let things slip last year, but what we had to do was make do and make sure that children got back on pace with their curriculum. And you know, Louise and, and the teachers out there, you probably recognized when we went back in September, we had to follow that trajectory. We couldn't stop and go back. And mm -hmm. so for most teachers, we were going backwards and forwards. That was indeed really, really stressful. The lack of socialization, and as we know in preschool that it's really, really pre-primary classes, it's really important that we have routine embedded into what the children do. And as, as uh, Sky was saying, movement is so important. And, and we had to reduce down to being in our bubble again, and also anchored to the table. And also knowing about children's emotional health is something that we need to know because it will have a huge impact, as I will share with you. But equally, there's something that we have to think about is the way we are now, the um, accessibility to things is not the same. You know, children haven't got the same resources they were using before. They may not have the same play spaces and equally for teachers. Teachers are parents too. So many teachers who are working in a physical classroom or also working online, they have to deal with their children having the same issues that I have spoken about. Schoolwork, you may remember as teachers, you were dealing with online and then you were having work sent to you with lots of JPEGs. Your emails were being <laughs> full with lots of JPEGs and you have to assess all this work. And you know you have screen fatigue. And also I've popped on the bottom here online because we, we're not really sure how long it will go on. But what we do know is that we're getting better at it. So that's just a brief overview of what we're doing. Now, I love this illustration because it's so simple for me to explain the principles of social and emotional learning. And what you can see here, it's a multifaceted look at how we look at our relationships and ourselves. And I'm just going to tell you very briefly one or two ideas from some of the segments here. You know, social awareness, how to behave in public. And when I say behave, what I mean is understanding the social uh, um, demands of where you are, religious or cultural, and also about your feelings. Would it be right to get angry? Would it be right to get sad? Um, and appropriate behavior. Relation skill, relationship skills. And this is about empathy. And you know, Louise, some of the things is we, if you don't develop the, the empathy, 
we don't know how to react when someone is sad. We don't know how to react when we're given bad news or we have to give bad news. And it's the same for children. Self-awareness, understanding how you interact with your friends, being able to um, maintain healthy relationships with friends. And that is also, apart from empathy, is also understanding and recognizing emotions. And responsible decision-making. Again, making the right choice and making the right decision can affect your friendship groups and also decisions that you can make. And when we talk about self-management, it's questioning yourself, why am I angry? Why am I sad? Why did that upset me? And then once we've identified the emotion, we can then look at what it is that was the trigger so it doesn't keep happening again. So these sound like very mature, uh, abstract kind of things, but if we can reduce them down to the pre-primary classroom and weave them into our everyday classes, the simpleness of this, you'll think, well, I could be doing this very easily. So I'm going to crack on and I hope that you'll enjoy quite a lot of the things that I'm going to share with you today. So very briefly, I'm going to run through what cell could be. So are you ready? You ready, Louise? Are you ready? Yes. yes. A bullet point. Here we go, because I really want to get going. So it can be used with class resources. Sky came up with some wonderful ideas and, I, and while he was coming up with these ideas, I was thinking I could just pop in a question there. I could just put in a comment and that would be social emotional learning. In, in that kind of learning environment. Also, giving the, um, children the opportunity to talk about what they like and don't like, it makes them acknowledge what's going on around them. Because when we are in isolation and we don't talk about our likes and dislikes, we begin to realize that somebody doesn't like the same thing as me and that's okay. And for children, that might be as simple as green peas. You know what they're like with food? <laughs> it might be as simple as that. But it's quite empowering to know that somebody doesn't like something or something that somebody does like something. And with small children with their friendship groups, they may find that Juan Antonio really likes something that I never knew before. So he might be a friend I could make. So it's as simple as that. It's uncomplicated. It doesn't need to be pre-planned and it doesn't need to have a lot of overthinking. And also, one of the benefits we talked about language is that we can learn some new expressions The children can extend their vocabulary from happy, sad and angry. And as Sky mentioned, sometimes it needs to be interlanguage. You can have both languages going on to make sure that the children are using the right expression. And also as a teacher, we can model empathy. We can acknowledge the differences that we have and we can say how we feel. And I know we probably feel a lot like saying, I can't carry on anymore. But in the classroom, it's saying something like, I'm tired today. Are you tired today, kids? Yeah, I'm tired. And it's like, well, my teacher's tired and I'm tired. Or, I, or I'm, I'm happy today. My teacher's happy and I'm happy today. Or asking why your teacher is happy today. So mm -hmm. this is a quick run through of the theory and, and, and why we use it. But before I move on, I just want to quickly mention that this is not a new concept. It has been used for years in countries. And just to give you an example, in America, there have been 10 year studies where they have taken children from the pre-primary classroom and followed them right through to secondary. Being able to have social emotional learning weaved into their curriculum, the children became more secure about their choices. They became more secure about their identity and also empathy. They tended to be more successful with moving on to further education and they tended to be more successful in their private lives. And you can imagine why, because if you feel comfortable with yourself, you then feel that you have the motivation to do whatever you can do really without being feeling sad or upset, but equally knowing yourself as a person. So this is one of the things, being emotionally secure. So before we move on, we're gonna have a quick look at the poll. And the question is, do you think children need opportunities to explore emotions so they are better equipped to deal with the adult world? So, here it is, it's on the screen, and we've got a majority, it seems. 
yes, we're at 98%. Wow. Are saying yes. Well, that's 99 are saying yes. Well, so, okay, yes, thank you, everybody. Page. We're all on the same page, which is absolutely brilliant. So, yeah, yeah. I think, as you can see, that uh, you can understand that. Now, um, I need someone to just close that for me because uh, there's you, a big you part. Just, <laughs> there's yes. a big part, that's it. Yeah. Um, so, Yvonne, you just, yeah. Uh, Click we, on the X. Well, I, then, that mm -hmm. is just wonderful that you can see the benefit of this. So what I'm going to do now is share quite a lot of um, easy, tactile, multi-sensory, cheap. I'm trying to think of all the adjectives I can use here because now we're in our COVID classroom. We have to use resources that can be easily thrown away or remade. And I'm aware of that. So let's have a look at the first ones. And I love these. Look at these. <laughs> I'm wearing my mask. I'm wearing my mask in class. And maybe I've got some children joining online from home and we're all saying, how are you today? And I could say, look, I'm really happy. I'm really happy. Or I could say, I need to go to the dentist. I, I really need to go to the dentist. Or I could be sharing that I'm really, you know, I'm really sad. I'm really sad today. Or I could be having a laugh. <laughs> and you can see how simple these are this is just a paper plate but you can use even just a circle from a four piece of paper and you can cut it in half but the one thing is is that children we're seeing everybody's eyes we're we're, we're kind of understanding each other with the eyes but it's nice if we can have our little smiles back and of course look at these as you can see they're all individual and they're great the children have stamped their personality on their little mouth things which are absolutely wonderful and i'm going to share another one with you which is part of our routine we still like to have the monitor of the day even if it's a reduced down uh, routine that they have because these build self-esteem it also gives timid children the chance to interact and also have some responsibility so i tried to find an activity which meant that was minimal touching and this one is a, a, a round face and as you can see you can spin the mouth happy or sad you can move the eyebrows up and down and again it's another thing we can talk about we can put it into our morning return how are you feeling today i can have paula paula how are you feeling today I'm absolutely happy. We'll make the happy face. Why are you happy? It's Friday. So, you know, we can build in these little questions. And as Sky said, if we don't have the confident language, even if they answer in their own language and you answer in English, that's great. If you're working online, how are you today? A simple emoji. And I've worked with some teachers in Bulgaria who are still online after all these months. And this is how they start their day on class and how they finish their class. And it gives the teacher an idea of the general feeling of the class. And also, did you get it? And if there's a, an emoji which is like, mm, not sure, she can go back and check with them a bit later on. So emojis have their place. Who'd have thought? Also, all these years of, of, of images and words, we're back to having emojis. And I really like this one. And this is a good one for children who are probably at home. Using resources that we have, we have some uh, post-its, some sticky notes, and they've got happy, sad faces, and they can flick through them. But what I'm using these as is a visual cue. I'm using these as visual cues. So as they're learning language, they're beginning to understand that this is, you know, smiling, smiling, smiley, I smiled. They're hearing language in a context, but equally we begin to express emotions. And down here, these are wonderful. These are plastic <laughs> spoons. And I really like these very cheap to buy and we have the eyes on the opaque spoons and we have the mouths on the see-through spoons and can you see again if they break if they get lost if you've used them enough you can throw them away recycle them and get some more and they're not terribly expensive but it's a tactile um resource that children need and also we could be doing some phonics so you know a smile you know the <laughs> happy we can use it and extend it that way so this one is just great 
and then moving on to maybe children about four or five and um, it's good if we're doing the curriculum talking about colors and I, I never realized that we had colors for emotions before and I thought well how could we use this because children are expressing themselves through drawings and using lots of colors they're learning the names of colors but look at this they can have a wheel they can have a display with the colors on and I've used something simple as a form as a heart. You can tie in whatever shape you like to meet in with your math concepts. But here what I've done is I've divided the heart up into sections, not too complicated, and the children can fill in the colors. Now, the one thing about doing this at the beginning of term and then doing it at the end of the term, you can see the colors change. So if you're having a lot of the colors of, uh, you know, anxious, angry, afraid coming through at the beginning of the term. And you know what, Louise, we can use this as a good assessment tool, because mm. if they're moving on and they're feeling more confident, we hopefully are going to get more colors through. Yes. And if you do it as a, a photocopy, we can even put in a little bit of handwriting, letter formation, getting them using the language in another way. So that, that's uh, the colour one. And also, I'm going to talk a bit more about using these simple props in a moment. But again, this is non-verbal contact in class. I do know what it's like if you ask a question. You, can you remember this, Louise, when you say, yes. hey, ah, and it's just like, no. Yes. <laughs> so you can have your non-verbal kind of like happy sad or again I've extended this again what how am I today Louise how am I oh sad I am a bit sad I am a bit sad but oh oh surprised I had maybe. a surprise which made me very happy but then I opened it up and I became very mm, very angry oh yeah you? because it wasn't for me in the end I got a package and I got so so upside and it wasn't for me in the end. So you can see non-verbal contact and it can be a game. What makes you happy? What makes you sad? And we, we heard Skylar talk about drama in the classroom. We're reduced down because we have our, our little bubbles that we have to work in and also, but how about this? You know, a simple pre-class activity or if you get through your class quickly, just the last five minutes, the headbands and, you know, the the child with the headband or even you the teacher what am i and the children don't say the word they have to maybe act it out i like that idea from sky about acting things out and also what makes you sad you know what made why are you sad so again this is another little activity you can be doing in the classroom and i love the toilet roll emojis when and mm -hmm. I've heard about them being a great phonics idea and i'm going to explain to you how we can use them in another way cross curricular way in a moment but here it's a simple thing with the card and the inside and that they're moving around and you can use this as role play we can have them as a family we can have a, a way of talking about family situations and also this is from Makaton, which is a global uh, sign language. Have you heard of Makaton, Louise? Yes, I have actually, yes. And, and again, it's another way, you know, I, I'm happy or I'm sad. I'm sad and I'm happy. And it's another non-verbal way of children being able to say how they feel in the class. And I worked in a school where we use this. And if children were not uh, feeling comfortable in the class, they had this non-verbal way of us, mm. for us as teachers to understand what was happening. You know, is everybody okay with the activity? Yeah, and if you had one or two children going, no, I, I'm, I don't know, I'm sad because I don't know. It, it gave me the opportunity to talk to the child without making a big um, drama about it. So, as I mentioned before, we have the toilet roll faces, which are brilliant. And I wanted to show you how social and emotional learning can be incorporated into a science activity. And I found this science activity, and you will have the link for this in the handout, where we can talk about, look at these, look at these faces. Oh my gosh, we've got surprised and we've got happy we've got ah oh, and we've got upset mm. and we've got the big toothy grin but you know what i'm going to extend this activity to volcanoes you know they're going to have fizzy heads so i can go through the the ingredients with the children and then the children can guess you know i'm putting in the colors and then when i add the vinegar to the baking powder and the food dye oh my god look what happens to the hair their hair goes 
great colors. And then I can say to the children, okay, what color, Louise, what color did the, uh, ooh, the surprise face had? had? The, su the surprise face, which one is it? Oh, the, is it orange? Oh, orange. Orange. Oh, orange. Oh, what about the, oh, face? Oh, very angry, red. Yeah, very angry. So as you can see, you know, if you're doing this in class and you're going to use the video, you can stop the video and say, what happens next? What do you think? And you're giving children the chance to be able to express themselves. Now remember, expression, having that confidence to join in is all part of social emotional learning. And also being able to uh, identify the faces here. So as you can see, it's a very simple activity and we can do it in class or online, but because of COVID, it might be best to do this online as an experiment and you could go back and even say, okay, who can remember the colors? And then put the screen back on. So it has, it has a lot of things we can use here, but I love the fact that we have the faces, we have to guess. We're also doing a science experiment. We're asking how you feel. Did you enjoy it? Did you enjoy it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah, it yes. Was fun. Then the kids <laughs> will be like, oh, I want to do this at home. So again, how easy it is to weave in social emotional learning into this. Yeah. Just now, one, there's one question in the chat from yes. Noelia, Noelia Sanchez, who's asking, can we do it with finger paint? With finger paint, I believe you can, as long as you have the baking. Mm. So, oh, you mean the, the expression or or just the experiment or the? Um... I'm not sure if she means the expression or the 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 um, the experiment or both. Perhaps Noelia, if you specify experiment. Oh yes, yes you can as long as you have the baking soda and the vinegar because they're the components that go. <laughs> Yeah, so I would say that if you're going to use finger paint, water it down a little bit. Yeah, Add a little bit of water uh, so that you have a liquid form, but it will work with that. It will work with that. But it's great. a great experiment, even if you're only going to use, you know, three or four, not the whole lot. It's a, the kids love it. And you know what? Yeah. They can draw it after they can draw it after, which would be great. As time is going on, I'm going to very quickly go into the story. And Daddy are in the kitchen. Let's make a shopping list. Eggs, apples, carrots. Oh, do you like eggs, Louise? Oh, yes, I do. I love them. Oh, you sure you like them? Yeah. Mm, no, I don't like eggs. I don't like eggs. Uh, no. Okay. Cereal, bananas. Do you like bananas? No, I don't. No, oh, I don't, bananas. I'm going to give that an angry face. I don't like bananas. Milk. Eggs, apples, carrots, cereal, bananas, milk. <laughs> oh, Dylan, you are funny. Shush, Dylan. Come on, let's go. Oh, no. I don't like shopping. Who likes shopping? Who likes to go to the store and go shopping? And I've also got my little spinner here. So I can have my, I can, the children can be in, you know, say, look, no, I don't want, no, yeah, I like shopping. And children don't like shopping or they do like shopping. So this is just quickly looking at how we can interact with a story. Oh, like, no. Like, oh, no. There's the shopping list. I can help. <laughs> I can help too. So you can imagine, you know, has your mummy forgot the shop? Yes, mum. So we can interact here with likes and dislikes. I'm just going to play a little bit more so you get an idea. Eggs? Yes. Very good, Dylan. Put the eggs in the trolley. Eggs? Apples? Yes. Very good, Mimi. <gasps> Oh my gosh, we've got apples, but what else have we got, Louise? Ice cream. You like ice cream? I love ice cream. Oh, my yeah. happy face. <laughs> I love ice cream. I love ice cream. So I'm not going to play the whole video, but as you can see, using this, we're also doing the language component 
the children can be joining in and you can have it as a non-verbal where they have their happy, you know, I like, I don't like. And then afterwards, you can see if they can remember the shopping list and the components in it. But trying to get through a video with children butting in all the time is quite difficult. Your little two, two, two minute video could end up being 15 minutes. And I know time is precious. So being able to just do non-verbal and then talk about it well i like eggs or i like or my grandmother makes really lovely apple pie and things like that the children can be talking i know they're limited with their language but again it's about talking about likes and dislikes but this is a great and these type of props can be used for all the stories all the stories that you have even the ones that sky mentioned earlier. Um, now, briefly, I'm talking about here at home, because home life has now become a very difficult place for children. As you can imagine, Louise, they're, they're, mm. they're, they're going home. Many Home used to be a place where it was a relief from being at school. And for many children, they were home for months and months and months and home and school merged into one place and so we want to remember what home could be like what it was like and not forget that children need to have their routines so what I did look at was that some very simple activities for children to talk about home and <clears throat> not to talk about too much but there's some children who are having a difficult time at home because stresses and relationships with uh, families can be very strained they may not be seeing their extended family and they may have brothers and sisters who may be away from home and can't get back to see them i personally know some young children who haven't seen their older brothers and sisters for nearly nine months because of the travel arrangements so offering an opportunity to talk about home so that is here this is a very simple idea and it's a wonderful template as you can see here it's an a4 piece of paper that's been folded over and can you see here these sections mm -hmm. have been yes so i have my house i have my house very very simple very easy and very tactile this is a little bit more of a, a, a you know more of an origami style but can be done with one piece of paper and as you can see here the display where children can look at and talk about their home i think it's quite important to talk about home life because children need to feel that they have that same routine as they had before and also there's another way of doing the homes which is one piece of a4 paper and the sides are tucked in can you see the sides are tucked yes. in and you have a house now, the one thing about talking, having this visual prop in your hand is we can talk about routines, we can talk about parts of the house, we can talk about family members, and also really good for our self-esteem and autonomy, they can have their little tick box of what they're doing at home, so that they can feel empowered, because part of the social and emotional learning is also what I can do, what I am learning, and how I am progressing to have my autonomy. Having my autonomy will help my self-esteem and I shall progress. So as you can see here, little homemade tick boxes to do with little chores and things that they're doing. And you know what? These are so important, Louise, because it's look what I can do. But also, uh, as a teacher, you can see what the child is doing at home and how they're progressing. You know, as a yes, teacher. Yes, in terms have, of tracking yeah. progress. Tracking yes. progress, you know, so it does help. Now, also about tracking progress, we're looking at, we want children to talk about us. And as we can see here from the, the, the books here, it's really important that children talk about themselves and how they can express how they feel and uh, what they're thinking. And often it's great, absolutely great when we have a template of a child. We have, like, these are little templates that have been colored in, how they see themselves. And the one thing about, we have with drawings is it surpasses the language skills. The children may not have the language skills there, but they certainly have the creativity. So look at these wonderful drawings here. We have the child who thinks he's a superhero and look at the mm -hmm. detail that's gone into that. You know, he's probably Thor, but I love the idea that that moment when he was drawing, this is who I am, this is me, I'm a hero and I'm interacting, look at that. Boom. And this one here, the wonderful, detail that's in that dress she's wearing a beautiful dress so the little girl is putting a lot of effort into this is how i want to be 
this is how I want to look. And it's a great way for children to express their creativity, imagination and fantasy because we can't be role playing anymore. And also to express emotions. Oh, I'd like to do this. You know, if I could do that and I can't do that. And it fits in very well with the all about me themes, which is something that is continually running all the time where we're in a free primary classroom and also role play. We talked a lot about movement. We can't dress up at the moment, but you know what we can do? We can make dress up mm -hmm. hats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can have these wonderful, look at them. They're just paper, a bit of card, uh, easy colored in. If they get broken, we can replace them. If they get dirty, we can replace them. And you can even minimize it to, you know, the children wearing the hats, they become the character. And on the table, they can even have table theater where they interact <laughs> with each other, which is hugely important for expression. Now, talking about expression, we can have wonderful resource, which is super simple songs. But also, I'm just going to play a little bit of this song so that I'll show you how we can use it. Simple, easy paced, good visual song for children to join in with. Let's have a look. Sometimes you feel happy Sometimes you feel sad Sometimes you feel excited Sometimes you feel mad you might laugh today You might cry today Easy, easy You might feel many different feelings And they're all So I'm going to stop it there because what you can see, look at that, Louise was joining in You, know, <laughs> you can hear me And it's a, it's a real calming down song actually The pace mm. of it calms the children mm. down but the good thing is that we have these visuals and I've stopped it here. And you know what, Louise? Oh, she's really sad. What do you think could make her sad? Oh, maybe she's lost a toy. Yeah, maybe she's lost a toy. And we have here a girl who's really happy. What do you think made her happy? She's going to see her grandmother exactly. later. Yeah, so we have this, which could be also learning language. It's a nice calming song. And we're having repetition with grammatical structures, which children need to be hearing. But also we're talking about emotions. And it's, it's just reinforcing that it's OK. It's really OK to talk about emotions. So we're using the senses. But now I want you to listen to this little soundbite. And maybe in the chat box, you can tell me, how does this make you feel? I'll play again. Mm. Mm. I think we've got an answer. Calm. Yeah. Calm. Relax, Claudia says. Sarah says, um, Sarah Garcia says, calm. Belen says, free. Uh, mm. Benita says, scared. <laughs> so the whole variety of, of freedom. She yeah. feels free, Christina. Um, Raquel says, well, it's not relaxing me, haha, -ha. it's scaring me. <laughs> Another person said, Christina says, quiet. Yeah. So, as you can hear, sometimes having a sound bite, and you can get lots of these free on the internet, is one, children are developing their listening skills. Two, it gives them the opportunity to think of where it could be. And remember, children have very limited life skills. So it's probably good to use something that they're familiar with. But also, it helps them think. Now, I got a lot of emotions in those answers. Mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. Yeah, so it was way of like, where are we? What do we think? And of course, you can pick the sound bite that fits in with your theme or your topic, you know, from your class book. And as I say, we often go into looking at if I'm going to use one one type of concept, I can use it for something else. So can you guess what this is? You've got to listen really carefully. Ooh. 
Any ideas? Ah, people have loads of ideas coming through, the majority of which are, it's a train. Yeah. Now, how do you feel when you go on a train? I haven't been on a train for so long. I can't remember the last time. <laughs> the only transport I've been in, well, is a bike, a car, and, uh, and, and that's about it. Oh, and a bus. Yeah. Um, looking great. forward. I agree. Yes. Happy to travel again, Paula. Totally. Can't wait. Yeah. Yeah, so you can just imagine, I picked a train here just for that, but I mean, could you imagine if you put in a car or if you put in something like a motorbike or a, 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 you can get one of a, of a bicycle with a ting ting, you know, it gets children thinking and if they like it, and I mean, I know it's, this is, this is a, what I wanted to show here is how you can link it to a concept like transport and things like that. Exactly. But these are really good, really good ways to evoke emotion, to evoke language, and also that children can practice their listening skills because listening is also a part of social and emotional learning, to be able to stop and listen to people, mm -hmm. to, to learn that skill of not over talking and not learning, listening and hearing what somebody is saying to you. So, <laughs> I'm trying to move on without everything going on. Yvonne, we've got a couple of minutes, we've got five minutes. Okay, yeah. so here yeah. we go. This is, yeah, so also, uh, Sky gave us a really good idea about children just doing, doing stuff that they like in the classroom about creativity. And I do understand that he, he was on about that. Sometimes giving them a little direction means that you get something from that. And here we have two really good visuals um, from Big Wheel 2, where we have children doing things they really like, which is color which is talking and here I just wanted to show you some of the wonderful images that we have from children with their understanding of what is happening with can you guess what these are oh no a virus the virus and the, the being at home so we're getting a talking point coming through here and also having a word wall now this could be for older children where they don't have to it can be anonymous they can put up a drawing they could put up an image but you know what if you feel something if you feel sad if you feel happy if you're able to put something up and it's there as a display it's really empowering for you as a as a child to know that you can express yourself as you can see here, we have a beautiful heart. Of course, this one has been pre-printed, but if a child gets an opportunity to put something up on a mural and it's there as an evergreen reminder. And here we have like the, the, the emotion, emotion jar pull out a color, what color would you like? And that, you, you know, you might say, I want blue or I want red or I want orange. And it could be, let's have a look. The blue one says, tell me something that makes you happy. Mm. ice cream <laughs> no, so it's random choice also so important let's talk about it an opportunity to just be an opportunity maybe in the morning or the last hour where the children can just talk because they often go home and have no friends to talk to and often it's it's just the case of being able to let off a little bit of steam to talk about what they like and don't like uh, and more so as we're in bubbles where you may not have friendship groups that they used to be before so being able to talk and just be and this is another expression that's coming through just being uh, very very quickly i can and i will pick a mix is having a chart where children can pick two things two things that they can do that week and they can choose what they want to do i can help my friends i can try something new i can talk about how i feel and they can share that with the class and also here home activities for social and emotional skills and these are probably for slightly older pre-primary children that can have more of a choice and giving them the choice to pick what they want to do makes a huge difference. Uh, I love this, the role and pick, pick an emotion and talk about it. I love this. So this can be done online. You can have your dice in a jar and they can talk about it and they tick off. It's like a bingo even. You can tick off the emotion and then you have to give a reason why you're feeling happy or why you're feeling sad. And another one which is good for online or if you have uh, children working on a table, very simple. Um, Sky talked about boxes. You can use those template boxes for eyes and ears and create a, an emotional face. 
So it's like roller face. And look, I have my <laughs> mood cup. Yes. Yeah, and I'm feeling very happy. <laughs> but then I could feel sad. Mm. So you can add any of the ones on there. And again, it's a cheap, tactile resource. And very, very quickly, before I feel off, the value of uh, small scale projects. And here we have uh, talking about clothes. And with clothes, it's again, personal likes, what we don't like. But well, while we're doing this, why not learn a lot more concepts? And you can see that I'm putting them here. Colors, numbers, sequences. And we can look at some vocabulary like spotty or pair. They're difficult, pair of trousers, pair of socks. But also what I like and what I don't like and what I wear. I mean, feeling comfortable is really important for our emotions as well. If you're wearing something you don't feel comfortable in or you feel embarrassed or it's too small it immediately affects your emotions Louise so mm -hmm. also here math concepts tell me something how many items can you see on here Louise um four four and uh let me see uh which is the smallest the sock no which is the biggest oh the dress I could even make that better, the yellow sock or the blue dress. Yes. I'm hearing adjectives and they're hearing language and context. And if you could choose any of them, which one would you like? Out of all those clothes, what would you like? I'd like the dress, the blue dress. I'd like the spotty trousers. <laughs> fantastic and as you can see down here in this image you can see how we have numeracy colors and also we're able to say about what we like and what we don't like and lastly i think this is the last one about activities i love the fact that we can use paper collages and everything to talk about food we probably can't use plasticine at the moment plasti but why not put to um, cut to get some fine motor skills going we might be able to do some cutting and this is an emotional pizza you know one of my strengths is one of the things i'm good at is and we could also be doing our topic on food of what we like and what we don't like which is really important because children go through that phase with food we can have food bingo, something we can do in class or something we can do online. And also children are talking about what they like and we can be using our faces and also vocabulary. I tried something new this week or this month. Again, autonomy, self-esteem, trying that green food that you're always avoiding. <laughs> <laughs> and also I love the fact that children can do their own fantasy pizza. So we don't have to have too many things. It's just Look at that, their own yes. creativity, mm -hmm. an easy pizza to make. And so I've rushed through all these ideas, which I hope is giving you some scope on what you can and cannot do with using the most simplest of things of how we can ask and integrate questions about our likes and dislikes. How do we feel? How are our emotions? And I think this is our question, isn't it? Our chat. Yes. Yes. And do you think introducing children? Yeah. Sorry, Louise, did you want to say yes. something? No, 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 no. Um, people are agreeing, basically. Oh, people are saying definitely. Definitely. Oh, that's amazing. That's absolutely wonderful. And I have to say, I think we recognize the value of this now. Um, well, unfortunately, due to the situation, but more so that how quickly things in life change, don't they, Louise? Yes, yeah. yes, no, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. But this is this is building the foundation, isn't it? But we will continue and, 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 and develop on this as we go through the yeah. different levels um, of, of education. So yes, as Camino said um, in the chat, of course, the, yeah. um, this, is, this is key. And, and okay. Hold on. And you know the power of this yourself when somebody says to you, how are you today? You feel a lot better when you're able to. Yes. Yes. No, no, absolutely. Absolutely. OK, I think um, oh, if anyone. The final slide is that one, which is beautiful. Oh. Absolutely beautiful. In a world where everyone wears a mask, it's a privilege to see a soul. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Yvonne. Oh, Thank you so I, much I, for sharing I, these ideas with us. Um, people are saying in the chat, "Thank you very much. It's been great, um, beautiful, and <laughs> that's lovely." Thank you, Gabriella. Um, 
If anybody has any question, please do, of course, ask. Now's your chance in, in the chat. But everybody is saying, Yvonne, thank you so much. Great ideas. Thanks to you, Yvonne. Thanks to Sky um, for, for sharing such a practical approach and that I think people will be able to put into immediate use in, 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 in their classes. So thanks to everybody. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I hope to see you all again sometime soon in, in the near future. Thanks a lot, Yvonne. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.